Watching Gab spar with the media and financial world the past few months has been one of the most disturbing calamities to ever befall the internet. Gab is not a criminal organization. Its founder, Andrew Torba, and officers, so far as I know, do not engage in any criminal activity. They are merely a social media network whose founding principles rooted in the Enlightenment tradition, the principle of free speech. It is one of the few platforms that allows users to say whatever they want, so long as violence isn't called for. For this, Gab was chased off and banned from hosting providers, domain registrars, banks, PayPal, credit card companies, Google, Apple, and API services, effectively deleting them from the internet for about a week, save for a reliable payment processor and a bank. Predictably, Gab grabbed onto the Bitcoin train like a drowning person grabs onto anyone nearby to try and save themselves. But Andrew was reminded of two things other people in cryptocurrency communities have been noting for a long, long time. Bitcoin is becoming centralized. It is not truly fungible, and exchanges are how it, and maybe all cryptocurrencies, are going to be controlled by the powers that be, whoever they may be. The ins and the outs, the on-ramps and off-ramps are theirs to control. Yesterday, Torba's personal Coinbase account was closed, and it turns out that several months ago, Gab's official accounts were terminated from Coinbase as well. So we can add Coinbase to the laundry list of companies banishing another company for the crime of allowing others to be assholes on its own platform. It's weird, but Gab has become this sort of speakeasy for free expression. Coinbase, on the other hand, has officially become the man. It has revealed itself and the rest of centralized exchanges to be the cancer on the blockchain that they really are. The core reason for the existence of cryptocurrencies is to rid ourselves of banks and systems that we need to trust. And is it any wonder? Apparently, if you engage in the unsavory business of allowing people to say undesirable things, you deserve to be financially banished. Then there's this little known institutional ability to sanction Bitcoin addresses which I don't want to get into detail here, but let's just say that for the layman, all transactions to and from an account can be known on the, on the Bitcoin blockchain. Anyone under threat might have a hard time converting their Bitcoin into fiat and vice versa. You do the math. People like myself who are in the business of communication and art are dependent on the mediums by which we communicate that art. We know how important it is to have the freedom to say what we want or need without the government punishing us physically or financially. Entertainment professionals enjoy profound degrees of freedom and financial compensation for saying what we want. It is important to pass that necessity and virtue onto the communication platforms and companies of the day, or we leave open a vacuum of power that will be filled with people who are compelled by their own moral virtue to sanitize the global network of words and ideas they don't like. A list of words and ideas that seems to grow without limit. Bitcoin will not save Gab because it can be tracked, and the exchanges are where they will be tracked, like a national border. Gab is going to have to embrace currencies like Steam, Monero, and Zcash. The first because it's a social network you can't be deleted from, and the other two because they can interrupt the pattern used to trace Bitcoin from address to address. It's also going to have to start using decentralized exchanges like BISC and BlockNet. As a filmmaker, as an artist, I find the latest piece of this pattern of network to platforming to be a terrible sign of things to come. When the next Piss Christ, NWA, Pulp Fiction, or Samuel Rushdie appears on the scene, will they be financially and technologically banished? Whether you like what Gab stands for or not, artists and communicators need to embrace the cryptocurrency ecosystem as a whole, not just Bitcoin, and make the case that the worst of humanity's vulgar expressions online are worth protecting so that we may protect ourselves from the tipper gores of the present and the future. Likewise, we have to understand that Bitcoin alone will not protect us from these people. We have to insist on ordering the whole crypto decentralized enchilada if we want to forever say what we want. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, hit that subscribe button, find me on Steam, and support me on Bitbacker. For only $2 a month worth of Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, you'll get exclusive content, early access to everything I do, and access to my private Telegram channel, where you can ask me any question you like about the process of making changelings with cryptocurrency. All right, see you there.